Hey, good morning, friends. Today is Wednesday, the uh, 22nd of March. Uh, Hope you're doing well today. Uh, We are looking today at uh, Psalm 13. We're also going to be looking at the Gospel of John, chapter 6, kind of the middle section of uh, of chapter 6. But Psalm 13 is a psalm... um, a psalm coming from somebody who feels distant from God. Have you ever felt distant from God? Have you ever felt like, not that you don't believe in God or that God has abandoned you, but just just seems far away. Um, I know there's been seasons in my life where, you know, my, my prayers felt like I was praying to a wall, right? Or or I just didn't, I, I just didn't feel God's presence. It just felt like there was a vacuum, sort of a void. And, and and to be clear, you know, from a theological sense, God doesn't abandon us. God doesn't leave us. We don't. Just, I don't believe that that's how it works. Um, I don't believe God does that. Uh, but there are these times where, for you know, just a wide variety of reasons, circumstances, circumstances of life, maybe our own uh, issues with our psyche, um, maybe uh, just the ebbs and flows of our emotions, whatever it is, there there are these reasons. There are there are all the there are these circumstances that just cause a disconnect, um, and, you know. And, and there's part of me that wants to maybe feel bad about that, right? As a as a person of faith, I shouldn't feel that way. I should always put, uh, I should always have the utmost trust in God and God's plan and and those things. And and there's truth in that, yes. Uh, and yet, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not perfect at it, right? I don't I don't always hit that mark. Um, and so it's good to know uh, that the psalmists were in that same place. In fact, this is a psalm of, of David, and, and David is in this place where God feels far away. Um, now we'll notice, it's a short psalm, it's not very long. Uh, you'll notice, though, that it, that it has this movement that in the midst of the disconnect, there's still a sense of trust, Right? Uh, so it's it's not like he's given up on his faith. In fact, in many ways, his faith is what's holding him together in this psalm. Um, so we'll see that as well in this psalm. So let's 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 go ahead and read it, and I'll uh, and let, let's hear God's word to us um, in its reading. Psalm thirteen. Uh, how long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. My enemies will say I have overcome him. My foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. See those see those pieces there, right? The sense of God's the sense of disconnect from faith, but not the absence of faith. Faith is very much here. Um, and in fact it's what brings the psalm to a, to a resolution brings it to a place of hope, a place of hope. All right, let's uh, take a look at our gospel reading. It's John chapter 6, verses 16 through 27. Now, when evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the sea. They got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea. And coming near the boat, they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not gotten into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. 
So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking at me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. I invite you to join me as we pray our prayer of thanksgiving and our prayer of intercession. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace for the new life you give in Jesus Christ. Especially, we thank you for the love of our families, for the affection of our friends. We thank you for strength and for abilities to serve your purpose today. Thank you for this community in which we live. We thank you for opportunities to give as we have received. I invite you, friends, to lift up your own prayer of thanksgiving. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them even as we have been served in Jesus Christ. Especially, Lord, we pray for those closest to us, our friends, our our families, our neighbors. We pray for refugees, for homeless men and women and children. We pray for the outcast and the persecuted. We pray for those from whom we are estranged. We pray for the church in Africa. Friends, I invite you to lift up your own prayer of intercession. God of our salvation, As the light of morning dawns, heaven and earth sing your praise. Cause us to live and to grow in faith so that we may bear good fruit for the glory of your holy realm. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, I I hope you have a great day. Um, I hope, even if it's not a great day, I hope that you sense God's presence moving in the midst of it, that you know the love and the joy of the Holy Spirit in your life, the presence of God, the Father working in and through you, and the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. Take care. We'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.